Yo dog, Kenny Boucher here. Next level painting, hitting you up with another painting tutorial. So obviously it's the glorious Friday, the literal best of all days. We got something special today. Commander Dante, the truest pimp of all time. We're gonna take him to the next level. Last week we painted his gold. Just the standard gold techniques, five simple tricks to painting gold. Uh, check out that video. It's literally one of the most easy things to do that nobody likes to talk about in terms of easiness. Today, we're gonna take him to the next level. We're gonna paint every detail, we're gonna highlight it, we're gonna finish this guy today in a full length uh, video. Typically, my videos are about 10 minutes, with about seven minutes of actual paint time. This is like over 10 minutes of paint time, and I'm gonna try to do that here more in the future. So without any further ado, let me mention one last thing, Patreon. Thank you guys for finding me on Patreon. I was able to buy my new mic equipment because my old Yeti broke. That's why you saw me with the Buster headset. Thank you for uh, checking me out on Patreon. That's huge. Uh, my personal fan funny page. Also, thelongaward.net, the home of the battle reports. Hashtag bring hobby back. Let's jump right into it. Let's do this thing. Commander Dante, the truest pimp in the Space Marine lineup. We're gonna take him to the next level. We're gonna finish painting him. Let's start off with black. Classic Vallejo Air Black. It's probably one of the best colors in the game. It's an airbrush color, but it paints so smooth. I don't use any other blacks. I officially only use Vallejo Air Black. We're gonna go through, and we're gonna pick out all those servo ligaments, those like, I like to think of them as like rubber connections in the joints so that it can still move their heavy armor. We're gonna pick those out. Hit him with solid black. N you know, nothing too crazy here. Just the beginning, you know. We have, gonna, we have to hit all those pipes on his face. We have to jump in on his shoulder pad, hit that thing black. The Blood Angels are known for a lot of reds, a lot of blacks. Uh, Dante, I'm going right off of GW's website here for how they painted uh, Dante. So I'm using like their color palette for the most part. You know, wings white, tubes black, etc. But obviously we're doing it our own way, our own special way because uh, we are special and unique. As we move forward, you can see, we're gonna do something a little unorthodox here. We're gonna grab this pale blue from the Vallejo Air series and we're gonna use it to start off our whites on all those feathers. This is a good way to create that icy, clean, super white um, feather effects that you that you see on the GW website. It's all about the, the groundwork, like how much time you spend on it. So I'm getting my paintbrush ready here. Uh, got my, my the appropriate amount of water. You do want to make sure you have your, your you know, I use um, water bottle lids to pour water. I use them as my little palettes. I, I drink a lot of water, so I always save the lids. I have them in a, in, a, in a glass jar and I pull them out, put one for my paint, one for my water, and then I just throw them away and keep going. So we're gonna get a lot of coverage here. You know, layer it up nice, get all the feathers. This is a paint by numbers process. I know you've heard me say this before. We're gonna do a lot of blending here. This is a somewhat advanced technique. It's gonna be a lot of back and forth as you paint the feathers, you know, one way, then go back in and paint them a different way. There is a lot of natural blending to these types of things, especially on these older models where they didn't have quite the detail that the newer models have. These are OG, OG sculpted models. Now they use computers and everything, so the detail is a lot stronger. So we're moving through, painting these feathers, paint by numbers, do your best not to get this on all other parts of the model. This is hard to come back from if you mess up. Uh, the, mo more tedious than it's worth. You gotta go through and you gotta paint all the wings, you know, like, and you'll, as you go, you'll realize how many of them there, there are in this model. Even his belt buckles got the wings. I mean, according to the GW website, this is how they paint them. You know, if it was me, I might have painted those wings gold and left, and maybe just painted the skull in between the white. But they do it the other way, so I'm gonna do it that way too, because I'm just trying to keep it true to the 20 year uh, model that this is with their 20 year paint job that they've had on their website. <laughs> and uh, his, even his backpack has them, but I'm gonna cut some of it out so you don't just see the monotonous. We're gonna go to our Vallejo Air White, another good paint and we're gonna go through we're gonna start blending somewhat carefully the white into the feathers like you know if you were a pimp you could just hit each one of those feathers out perfectly um 
And for the most part, I am doing that, but I'm going to come through and I'm going to blend it back with the blue, so I'm not too worried about it. I like to be organic with my blending process, but uh, somebody who would be a beginner, you're going to want to get a real good detail brush and you're going to want to just paint a skinny white line basically over those feathers and leaving the blue to show through. I'm going to blend them in. You see here, I'm just going really gangster on the left wing and I'm going to come back in with the blue and I'm going to blend it back and I'm going to kind of do a reverse. I'm going to paint the blue uh, in between the feathers to create that contrast. I love a good solid blend. It's a... Uh, it's where I like to live, obviously, being an airbrush artist. I like to create as many interesting transitions, transitions on a model as possible. As you can see, it's just like I've just abandoned the idea of slowly painting each feather over at this stage um, and just started building up that white. It's hard to see the white, obviously. white uh, The light really bounces off the white. and um, I'm not a professional, so I'm going to hopefully fix that with my lighting equipment here soon. You know, shout out to my patrons. On my patreon page for giving me the money to upgrade at least my new mic for now still using the old camera but uh we'll, we'll, we'll get there guys it's a journey together we'll bring this hobby back so you can see we've done that white we've started building it up uh on the on the on the, on the bait on his chest and now we're and you can see something's happened there i've gone through and began the the the, the beginnings of the blend so I'm just trying to show off the model, show you all the all the, all the feathers and what we've done here, and flip them around 360, give you the, give you the full look. I'm trying to um, show more with my with my videos. Uh, I've had a few complaints that I wasn't showing enough. So let me know uh, if you guys like this new formula. Same thing. Let's go in and blend the bell buckle. Exactly the same protocol as the chest. Literally, all the wings are going to be super lame and they're, they're gonna take up more of your time than almost anything else on Commander Dante. Because we're not gonna use a wash. I don't wanna dirty them up with a wash. I wanna keep that icy blue, that pure white over that blue. Like, see this big feather on his arm? Literally did what we talked about. I went in and I painted each strip of feather over that blue. Same thing, jump in, start working on it. And, and so you can see that one wing is mangled on the one exhaust pack. Uh, uh, exhaust vent on his um, backpack and you can see that's the beautiful wing over his axe arm over his melta arm that is just a mangled piece of resin that I'm just doing my best to keep it looking somewhat like it's a wing stupid fine cast anyway that's simple blending let's jump right into the metals the actual silvers there's not very many of them but we're going to use Vallejo gun gray we're going to find everything that we feel should be silver which is just like I said not a whole lot of things uh, <laughs> I think after the barrel of this melt gun, maybe a couple of other details on his gun and maybe his axe. If I had to guess, <laughs> but uh, obviously I just painted this guy. I know what I did. So basically you don't want to jump the gun in a lot of places. And here's a place I'm jumping the gun. I'm painting the silver on his axe, knowing full well that later I'm going to airbrush some effects on that axe and I'm going to mess up and overspray because that's what happens onto that silver and I'm going to have to just paint the silver again. The proper protocol would have been to wait till the end to paint the silver and you'll see <laughs> by the end of the video what I mean. Here's a classic color, Reaper Harvest Brown. This is one of the best browns in the business. I'm using it for his ammo pouch and his uh, pistol pouch. Apparently he has a bolt pistol tucked away in his pouch. <laughs> and so I'm going to paint this um, brown over there. And with a simple brown wash, this looks like really clean leather. Like it's a, if you don't have, you need to get two browns on your game. It's the Reaper Master Series, Harvest and Orange Brown. They're the two best browns in the business. You need to just go get them. Don't even, don't even question it. They're amazing. As you, you can see that wing that I was talking about above his, uh, jump pack there that mangled wing that's just the world's worst uh wing <laughs> but um i had to freestyle some wing designs into uh into it where there were none like i said uh fine cast has come a long way but it's still not as good as the original metal was so i don't know what gw was thinking but probably had to do with money so let's um get these simple details done pay these pouches and move on to the next stage. Uh, I get a little impatient when I'm waiting for 
um, the littlest details in the model. Like I know there's all sorts of things to do still. Like the red purity seals, the red gems on his head, the, the gem on his uh, chest. You know, we gotta do the, do some more highlighting. I mean, this model took literally all day to paint. <laughs> Cause he's, even though he's an old model, because he has a lot of details on him in the old way, that means you still have to paint the details, but you have to do more work because the details are not as streamlined as they are now. Now you could have painted those wings probably pure white, hit them with a wash and just highlight them and they would have been fine. But I know from experience they would not have been fine. We're going to paint the reef on his head and GW paints it green. So I literally grabbed random dark green from my toolbox, painted it dark green, and then random bright green and I'm going to highlight it bright green. You don't need to overthink it. Any green shall do. The parts that you don't really want to deviate from here are the blue to white transition and the golds from the first video. Everything else is really up to you. It doesn't matter if you have a good brown that you like, if you have a good metal, you're going to get relatively the same effects. My favorite, the reason that like that black and that silver are my favorite is because they have easy application, not because of specifically how they look. And now we're going to go in and you know, like I said, we're highlighting that reef, pop it out, no washes. We're using a lot less washes um, for this for this part. Like if you want, I want this model to look as clean as possible. So washing is kind of more of a dirty look and we've already done all that and come back from it. Like Dante is gonna look as pristine as possible. He does not play games. He keeps his armor clean and he has people to do that for him when he doesn't have time. So he will always look clean. So. As if to counteract my, to contradict myself, I'm going to pull out a wash just to hit those purity seals and those ammo pouches because they need it. The purity seals are, it's just my technique. Yeah, I don't know why I do them. I like the way they look with a little brown wash on them. And obviously the leather pouch needs a little bit of brown uh, to make it look realistic. I don't know what he keeps in those pouches, but he's pretty serious about them. So, he, you know, he does his thing. And so we're also, you know, while we're at this stage, gonna throw some wash on the melt gun. Uh, keep it, keep it real, keep it, keep it, keep it used. Uh, we're going to do a couple of effects you haven't seen uh, me use in a long time. Uh, but before we get go go too far with those effects, we're gonna highlight those gems. Gotta hit that. Um, you know, I've done more work. Like I'm being deceptive here. I painted those gems red, and I'm working a little orange back and forth in them until I get exactly the gleam I want. This, this will take, it, it, this is not as easy as I make it look. We're gonna pull out the German gray, which is the ultimate highlight black color. And we're gonna paint those, we're gonna highlight those servos in his arms and his elbow. And we're gonna highlight the melted gun. It is a really good color for highlighting black, especially if you mix it with a little black and you know, and do your first highlight. And then go in with pure German gray for your second highlight. It's just a really great color. I can't say no good things about German Grey. Um, you can even use it to draw the highlights in and then take pure black and cut the highlights down to a more pristine line. I find that to be an easier way to highlight with the edge uh, on black versus trying to like draw the skinniest line. Draw a fat line and, and erase it essentially with black. Back to Harvest Brown. We're gonna do some things here. Like I said, best, best brown in the business. Looks like we're gonna come back and I wanna say we're gonna do some airbrushing on a melting gun. <laughs> so this is rapid fire. I'm using I'm showing you my my, my heat my heat technique. So harvest brown, then let's hit Vallejo uh, Scarlet Red. Let's jump right into violet. This is a model air color. I mean I'm a uh, model color, not a not air color. But I love this color. And we're gonna very lightly hit a purple in there, just a, just a just small amount of purple on the tip. And you're seeing we're getting that heating effect, that, that, that super uh, effect. And this is the last part, is the light blue, light sea blue. This is a great color. You want to be very subtle with the airbrush. And then if you want more, do it with the paintbrush after this very tiny amount of blue I just put on there. Go in with your paintbrush afterwards and do a little bit of highlighting on the tip. Um, as you can see, it's, it's already been done. I didn't want to waste your time. We're taking that same sea blue and now we're washing, I mean, we're dropping some of it off on this uh, power axe like I talked about. And you can see, we just undid all that metal I talked about from before. And I haven't quite decided what I want to do here yet. 
Right now I'm adding white to the blue and I'm gonna paint it coming in from the point, the top, the 12 o'clock and six o'clock position on the X. I'm gonna highlight it to extremely white. Um, and you can tell at this point in the video, I haven't quite made up my mind yet what I'm gonna do here. You see, I'm bringing the white in as if I'm gonna paint the whole ax. I just, I'm just not sure yet because there's so many different fun ways to paint axes. And the way I'm gonna opt out here is I'm gonna paint it like that, kind of that military black metal effect where, I'm, where just the razor edge of the blade is shiny and the rest of it's black. And I, and I, hopefully I made the right choice. I like it for Dante. I like to think Dante would have a really cool tactical ax <laughs> that I wanted to look different than a, than a power ax because he doesn't go to initiative one. So I was really, didn't want to make it look like the traditional power ax that everybody else has. And as you can see here, I'm just, this. don't even worry about the, the, the airbrush on this effect. Just box out the effect uh, with your paintbrush and then fill it in. You know, follow the line you just established. Be very careful here. It's, if you mess up this line, you will have to do it all over again. So this, you know, patience is the name of this game right here. And this is something I've done a, a plenty of times, you know. Uh, I've done whole armies of guys with axes this way. Instead of, you know, so this is, it looks daunting, but it's actually not as hard as you think it is. And this is honestly an easy way to do a power weapon effect with a paper, with an airbrush. In the Mephiston video we're going to start up uh, next week, we're going to do a really amazing power weapon effect there at the end, and I'll show you guys. I'm sure you've already seen it in my gallery. Uh, power weapons are really easy to do if you, pre if you um, give them the proper amount of love with your airbrush and your paintbrush, because you can see they're like it's you've given it a lot of definition with it with the paintbrush got to go back in obviously and we got to wipe out the metals um, but before you do that look I'm gonna drop a little reverse edge highlight on that black same blue sea blue let's draw a nice little highlight on it kind of give it the, the illusion that it's like just shimmering you know and I'm gonna use a little white to spike that highlight in the uh, corner uh, in the 90 degree corners or the 45 degree corners there uh, and once we spike it out, you'll see it here. There it is. Dante looks fresh. Amazing heat score on his melted gun. Fresh power axe. Just a very clean model. Like I said, uh, like the whites on the wings are the freshest and cleanest. We highlighted as much stuff as we could, but it also made sure to use really subtle techniques in the, in the golds. I'm really happy with this model. I've painted a lot of Dantes, and this is my favorite one I've painted so far. I'm glad that you let me have this opportunity to share my techniques with you thanks for watching this video players thanks for checking out that video don't forget i've got tons of other tutorials in the archives and i do this every week for free if you're looking for an ad-free experience check out the longward.net all these videos come out a week early with exclusive access and exclusive downloads and ad free also Check out my best friend Rob Bear at Spiky Bits and of course the Long War YouTube channel for all the freshest battery parts. Thanks for watching.